OK, so we're going to solve this problem where we've got a recurrence relation for a sequence which starts with 3, and then to find the next term, xn plus 1, we have to substitute the previous term, xn, into this formula. And the goal is to find x100. So we don't want to substitute in 100 times here. There's actually quite a clever way of doing this. And the first thing we could do towards solving the problem is we could notice that these two quadratics can actually be factorised. So factorising the numerator one way or another, we could get 4xn minus 2 times xn plus 1, and then the denominator would factorise as 3xn minus 1, again multiplied by xn plus 1. So you see here the xn plus 1's cancel, which gives us a slightly simpler function to work with. So we're effectively going to take the number 3 and then substitute it into a function, which we could call, if we write this as f of x is now going to be 4x minus 2 over... 3x minus 1. We're going to substitute 3 into this function, and then what we get from that we substitute back in, and we do this a hundred times. And this function, f of x, is actually a special type of function called a Mobius transformation. So more generally, if we had f of x was equal to ax plus b over cx plus d, and if we've got another Mobius transformation, there's a really nice property here if we compose the two functions. So we say gx is, let's say it's px plus q over rx plus s. Then let's see what happens if we try and calculate f of g of x. So we substitute x into g, then we substitute this into f. So we're going to get a times g of x, so px plus q over rx plus s, and then we've got plus b, and then in the denominator, we've got the same. In place of x, we've got the g of x function. So we've got c times, again, px plus q over rx plus s. And then we've got plus d. And then in the numerator and denominator, we could multiply by rx plus s to get rid of this fraction. So we've got b times rx plus s, and we've got d times rx plus s. And then if we group together our x terms and our constant terms in the numerator, We've got APX and we've got BRX, so AP plus BR times X, and then our constant terms we've got AQ plus BS, so we've got AQ plus BS in the numerator, and then similarly in the denominator CP plus DR times X, and we've also got CQ plus DS. And there's some really interesting structure here. If you think about, if we imagine the matrix A, B, C, D, and P, Q, R, S, if we were to multiply these two together, the matrix that we would get as a result looks very similar to the kind of structure we're seeing in this fraction. So there's a lot of similarity here between composing Mobius transformations and multiplying matrices. So if we were to multiply these two matrices corresponding to F and G, we would get exactly A, P plus B, R in our first entry, our top right would be AQ plus BS, our bottom left would be CP plus DR, and then finally we would have CQ plus DS. So this matrix corresponds to our composition of these transformations. Then we could apply the same sort of idea with our original function f of x like this. If we want to find what happens when we apply this function a hundred times, the problem now amounts to working out what is this matrix raised to the power of 100. So if we can find this, then we can substitute in our value of x, and we'll be able to find the hundredth term in this sequence. So we've just written this a little bit more formally, that because this function, 4x minus 2 over 3x minus 1, is a Mobius transformation, if we want to compose this with itself a hundred times, then this is equivalent to taking its corresponding matrix, raising it to the power of 100. Then let's say this matrix was a, b, c, d, then the corresponding function would be ax plus b over cx plus d, and then we just substitute in our initial value of 3, which is where this coefficient of 3 comes from. So if we want to calculate this matrix to the power of 100, we're going to try diagonalizing. So I'll include a link in the description if you're not familiar with this process. So we take the determinant of our matrix, but we subtract lambda times the identity matrix. So we've got 4 minus lambda, negative 2, then we've got 3, and then negative 1, take away lambda. Then we take the determinant of this, so we're going to get a lambda squared, first of all, and then we've got a plus lambda and take away 4 lambda, so minus 3 lambda, and then we've got negative 4, take away negative 6, gives us a plus 2. And this factorises nicely as lambda minus 1, 
lambda minus 2. And we set this determinant equal to 0, you see we get two distinct eigenvalues, lambda 1 is 1 and lambda 2 is 2. So if we follow the first eigenvalue, first of all, lambda 1 equals 1, we're now going to apply the matrix 4, negative 2, 3, negative 1 to try and find an eigenvector. So we've got this multiplied by xy needs to be equal to 1 times xy. So multiplying the matrix, we're going to get some simultaneous equations now, 4x minus 2y equals x, and then at the bottom we get 3x minus y equals y. So solving both of these, you can see both sets of equations are going to be equivalent to 3x equals 2y. So if we want to get a eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue, we could take, for example, x is 2 and y is 3, so that we have some nice integers. So we can say that our first eigenvector then is going to be 2, 3. So let's do the exact same now, but for our current second eigenvalue, where we've got lambda 2 is 2. So just like before, we'd solve a system of equations. We'd have 4x minus 2y, we'd have 3x minus y. But now instead of being equal to 1 times xy, it'd be equal to 2 times xy. So we've got 2x and we've got 2y. And then solving both of these, you'll actually see that both sets of equations are just equal to x equals y. So then our second eigenvector for this eigenvalue of 2, we could just take 1 and 1, for example. So then now that we've found the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, we can write our matrix in diagonalized form by, first of all, we've got 4, negative 2, 3, negative 1. And we'd write this as P, D, P inverse, where P is the matrix made up of the two eigenvectors. So this would be 2, 3, 1, 1. And then D is the matrix made up, a diagonal matrix with the corresponding eigenvalues. We have 1, 0, 0, 2. And then P inverse is the inverse of this one. So we'd swap the 1 and 2, we'd get 1, 2. But notice the determinant is 2 take away 3. So we get a determinant of negative 1. So we'd have to multiply by negative 1. So we get a negative 1, the negative 2 there. And then we make these two terms negative. But then when we multiply by negative 1 for the determinant, they actually turn positive again. So this is going to be our P inverse matrix. So now we've written this in diagonalized form, and then it'll be much easier now to calculate this matrix raised to the power of 100. And the reason this makes things easier is if we imagine multiplying this matrix by itself over and over now, we've got PD, P inverse times PD, P inverse, and so on. You can see that the P's and P inverses are just going to cancel with each other. So we're just left with p times d to the power of 100 times p inverse. And actually raising this matrix d to the power of 100 is really easy. So if you imagine multiplying this by itself over and over, we just get 1 to the power of 100 and 2 to the power of 100. So we're going to end up with 2, 1, 3, 1. Then we've got 1 to the power of 100, 0, 0, and 2 to the power of 100 for our diagonal matrix to the power of 100, then we've got our inverse matrix as well. So now if we multiply the first two pairs of matrices, we get a 2 in the top left, we get a 2 to the 100 in the top right, we're going to get 3 in the bottom left, and 2 to the 100 in the bottom right, and then we still need to multiply this by our P inverse matrix, which is going to give us in the top left we'll have 3 times 2 to the 100, take away 2. In our top right we're going to have negative 2 times 2 to the 100 plus 2. In our bottom left we're going to have 3 times 2 to the 100 again, but this time take away 3. And in the bottom right finally we have negative 2 times 2 to the 100 plus 3. So negative 2 times 2 to the 100 plus 3. So now this matrix is our ABCD, so we can read off now that our x100 is just going to be, we have 3 times 2 to the 100 take away 2, and we multiply this by 3, substituting in x is 3 here into our function, and then take away 2 times 2 to the 100 plus 2, and then we divide this by the same sort of thing, 3 times 2 to the 100 take away 3, again this gets multiplied by 3, this is our 3c, and finally plus d would give us take away 2 times 2 to the 100 plus 3. So then if we group together our 2 to the 100 terms, in the numerator we've got 9 times 2 to the 100 take away 2 times 2 to the 100, so we've got 7 times 2 to the 100, and then we've got take away 6 plus 2, so we 
take away 4. And then in the denominator, we've got again 9 times 2 to the 100 take away 2 times 2 to the 100 gives another 7 times 2 to the 100. Then we take away 9 and add 3, so we get take away 6. So this we can write as our final answer then for x100, the hundredth term in this sequence. You can see this is a fraction which is very close to, but slightly more than 1.